in the United States of America that breed children in order to sell them. Mm -hmm. And when they are sold, they come without birth certificates, which means it's easier to kill them and have no one ask where they are. We're also importing children by the plane load. Again, children who have no documentation. It's not just child slavery or child sex abuse. It's also child torture because you have adrenalized blood. You, you have the, the whole blood drinking ceremony of the satanic world. It's also the uh, use of children for harvesting body organs. We'll have the Falun Gong uh, testimony tomorrow. Um, one of the reasons that the Falun Gong are so popular is because they're so healthy uh, so that you can harvest their body organs uh, with, and, get, and get the very best. And then you have ritual ceremonies and ritual murder uh, as well as incidental murder. I have found in my research and preparation for this court and all of the work that will follow that most organizations that end up being um, used to prey on children Oxfam is a recent example. Uh, all of the United Nations organizations, the Boy Scouts of America, all of the child services agencies across the United States of America, they did not start out as organizations to prey on children. But they attract pedophiles. And ultimately, pedophiles end up rising in the ranks and controlling those organizations. So that an organization that initially started out in the service of children becomes an organization that is, in fact, hunting children. Now, it's my, not my working assumption, but uh, the, the working assumption yet to be proven that the totality of the children disappearing worldwide is toward 8 million people. Toward 8 million children. In the United States of America, the acknowledged number, not counting the children being bred without birth certificates, not counting the children being imported without documentation, is between 600 and 800,000 a year. Now imagine Africa and East Asia and all these other locations. I personally believe that the number we want to try to document is rising well beyond the official figures and we, will, we have yet to learn what the actual number is, okay? The other working assumption is how long do these children survive within this system? What I am hearing from the witnesses that I've talked to is two years. It may be longer, it may be four years, it may be six years, but by and large, these children are so abused. I mean, we're talking rapes by the hour, and so forth, that they reach their expiration date uh, within two years. And then they're murdered with impunity, or they're ritually murdered if that's what they've been bred for. So I think we need to document this. No one else has done this before in a systematic manner. This commission is rendering a signal service by seeking to do an overall view in the public interest. I believe that once the public realizes that the government is not protecting their children, at a scale of vulnerability that we can articulate, then everything else about the government is called into question. All right? So for me, this is a truly righteous endeavor. And I will end by saying that as much good as it might do to get the British angry, for me, the center of gravity for change is the American public. Because if you can get the American public angry, we will stop supporting dictators overseas. We will close all of our military bases overseas. I am on record as a former CIA uh, operations officer as saying that our thousand bases overseas are not there for national defense. They're there to serve as lily pads for the smuggling of guns, gold, cash, drugs, and small children. So let me say I am proud to be in your company. And I believe that no matter what we do or do not do, it is going to make a difference. God bless you all. These children are...